of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Father, which art in heaven, dear Lord God, it's once again that we humbly come before your throne of grace to give your name the glory, honor, and praise, and thanks for your dear Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear Lord God, we ask that you please continue to bless our mayor pro tem, our city council, city manager, city attorney, and the department heads on tonight as we gather together to make decisions for the betterment of all the citizens of Dillon. And we pray that in everything we do, we be careful to give your name the glory, your name the honor, and your name the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, Pete. Oh, all right. Again, um, I first get an approval of the agenda. And this does include an executive session to talk about legal and personnel matters. Uh, um, can I get a motion? I make a motion. Yes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Um, approval of the <coughs> minutes. Uh, we, we were very active. We had a regular meeting September 13th. Special meeting uh, September 20th and 23rd. Can I get a motion on all three? I got a change that had to be made okay. online. And I will make a motion that we accept the one that's changed. What was the change that we have in on record? The change was a typo online. Yeah, they had me that I disagreed with one in the road, but I agreed with one. Okay. Okay. That was in the minutes of September 13th. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. And Ms. Dean has got his copies. Okay, all right. Can I get a motion? Made a motion. Second. All, second. all right, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, just um, uh, to give you a little update, um, the, uh, the curve looks better as far as COVID. Um, we're, we're um, I think the aggressiveness of the uh, Delta variant, uh, aggressiveness meaning it's contagiousness, not necessarily the, um, uh, the, the variance. I don't know if there's any difference in the variance. I think that between um, our um, uh, vaccinations and the cases that you know we're, we're probably getting a good bit closer to herd immunity um, as rapidly as that was moving the Delta variant we're just kind of moving through people that uh, one um, was you know not vaccinated and and um, uh, quite honestly, if you weren't vaccinated and it moved through the population that, of the uh, very vulnerable, you know, they've un unfortunately have already either gotten through or succumbed. Um, we, we do know that our immunity with, the, with having the, the, the actual infection gives us about 27 uh, times more immunity um, and uh, also that if you do get it and you've been vaccinated your chances of ending up in the hospital or on a ventilator uh, although it still can happen and death can still happen it it, 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 it markedly changes that so um, I it's I think that we're beginning to see you know maybe the light of the end of the uh, uh, tunnel and, and, and I hope I'm right um, I don't know that you hear a lot of that on TV and I think that the scientists are a little bit afraid to to you know call that out but you can look at the curves and all the curves especially in Dillon and in South Carolina those curves look much better so maybe we're beginning to, to see at the end of the uh, tunnel um, had a meeting of uh, downtown development and uh, it was a very good meeting, uh, uh, a kind of a lengthy meeting. Um, we, we got a little bit, I think, uh, a little bit of um, um, some compromising to do to understand whether we want to have a, a quaint um, uh, 
venue in our downtown and with with shops and um, and we you know won't shops or you know if if 34 comes into downtown as far as Long Street with uh, four lane from I-95, you know, do we want to have, uh, you know, a, a thoroughfare uh, where it would be four lanes and in the other way it might be uh, uh, three lanes actually. You would have a lane on the side and a, a turn lane in the middle and uh, that, that process the way they would have you park would uh, create more more downtown on Main Street parking. Uh, that was the recommendation of our uh, uh, you know the people that did the study that, that would make it smaller. Uh, I think that ended up costing their estimate was about a million dollars a block. And um, you know that's kind of tough to swallow but um, we we also talked about some issues that um, so you do create this beautiful down, downtown landscaping uh, do we have the people <coughs> willing to support uh, downtown um, uh, you know uh, stores and, and shops I, I don't I don't know that question uh, I don't know the answer to that question um, Many of these small towns have access to uh, large sums of money. Uh, uh, Marion and Mullins have something. Of course, you know Florence does, Hartsville does, uh, and they they tapped into that money. And we Dylan Dylan doesn't have that. Uh, my own feeling is, and this is kind of a, a more long term. Uh, solution, and I think that it, regardless of which one comes first, uh, the downtown revitalization or, or long-term planning, but we have to do something about uh, our, our crime in uh, specifically Newtown and Jacksonville. Um, these cause a very negative digital footprint when you look at us on the internet. Um, Somehow we need to improve the image of our schools. Our, our schools, you, you can get as good an education in, in Dillon as anywhere in the state if you want. But there's a, a, a sector of kids that, that really don't want it. And they make the whole system look, you know, uh, perfectly poorly. And I don't know what that answer is. Um, we're, our payment uh, to stay open is based on the number of kids you have. So you've got to have them in the system. And I don't know how you uh, create motivation to um, have those kids perform so that the, 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 the ship rises. Uh, I think the other uh, big thing that, um, that's capital investment that I don't know where that money will come from. We've got a few people looking at it, uh, but we need we need a subdivision. We need a twelve hundred subdivision that has twelve hundred to twenty five hundred square foot homes. Uh, we have everybody says we need more industry. We we don't need more industry. We've got plenty of industry, but they don't live here. The the people that make the big money. They're living in Ainer or, or Florence or Lumberton or Longer. They do not live in Dillon. And those are the people that, that we need to help support these downtown, um, downtown uh, businesses. So um, we, we've just got some challenges. We've got some good people to, to talk about and plan and um, it's not it's not hopeless uh, at all it, it these, it's just trying to figure out how we can best plan for our future and, um, and be patient with that meaning that uh, a lot of things a lot of where we are right now and Dylan's in great shape but we didn't do it in a year we didn't do it in two years we did it in 12 15 years 
so um, I think just being patient and, and letting the, uh, we've got good people on these committees and we'll figure out what, what we need to put first and how we need to take it on. That's, that's all I have. Uh, William? And then follow up with Dr. Wallace for counsel and give your packet is a summary of that committee meeting downtown master plan. So you do have a copy of that. First and foremost, I'd like to welcome my new city attorney. The first day was October 1st, and she folks in the her and two others back in September. So she's here at the first meeting. Thank you, be late. Thank y'all very much. I'm very excited about working with all of you, and I appreciate the opportunity and giving you to do that. First thing I have. Following up with you again, Dr. Wallace, about COVID, um, as you may have seen when you drove out tonight, there's a big tent in our parking lot. That is a testing site that he had his got it's seven days a week uh, from 9 o'clock in the morning to 4. I'm not sure how long they're going to be here. I think they've been here so far three weeks. They don't have an ending date with that. But they are testing daily out of the Wilma Center in the parking lot. He had also his schedule. Is that a rapid test or a? I'm, don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, one, I don't know. One, one thing that we have noticed in our office that vaccinated people when they're infected, their uh, rapid test is negative when their, their PCR comes back positive. And um, honestly, I think that probably uh, uh, supports the fact that they're probably not real infectious because their antibodies have already neutralized a lot of that virus. So, um, you know, it'd be interesting to know what they're doing. I'll, I'll see if I can find that out. But do you see them that busy? No, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not busy at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. We had a little outbreak at the, the Christian school. And, uh, and this is kind of, I think, who's getting it right now is the, the younger uh, kids, the healthy people. But I'll find out. I don't think it's rapid with all the effort you see. But again, they're here seven days a week from nine to four. DH is also going to be here starting Wednesday to do first dose. Uh, again, they're going to use this this room. They don't look like, they don't think they'll have a big number of people. But they'll be here on October third and back on November third for their second dose. And that's on the journal. I Pfizer. Pfizer. And McLeod <coughs> will be here sometime this month. I don't know the exact date for the booster. Yep. Um, is it Monday? They'll be here for the booster. Not to interrupt you, but just a just a, another note uh, for for old folks like like me. Um, mm -hmm. The Pfizer seems to be a uh, a little easier on you. Uh, Moderna, the people that have had the Moderna, you know, you need to go ahead and get that booster if you're going to do that. But uh, Moderna's a little bit, you know, you, you might get a little flu like something. So, so uh, if, if you had your first two with, with Pfizer, I know the Moderna, can you get the booster? No, I think it's had to be the one. Stick with the, uh, the one and, and I'm not sure which one the cloud's doing, I'm assuming. The cloud's Pfizer. They the know what the Pfizer is. Yeah. Is that recommended, Doc? I took it. You were um, in yeah, yeah, I took it. And I've not, amazingly, I haven't had it. I haven't been running it all day long. I haven't had it. Probably get it tomorrow now that I've said it. You know, you know. <laughs> so that, that's what I had on COVID. Um, in my letter to you, you know, when we talked about it previously about the American Rescue Plan, I sent out a text to all of council sometime at the end of September to let you know that we have received 50% of our funds, which was a total of $1,570,946.62. Uh, that has been received. It is an account on its own in your budget report, finance report, Janet is showing you on its own that we have received it, no money has been spent. Um, also in my letter, I told you it was still not very clear on some things how to use this money. One of the things we can do is what is known as premium pay, not bonuses. Uh, 
premium paid for essential workers to the city. And I, I gave you a breakdown of how you may want to do that. It's not something that I want you to vote on tonight, but something to think about and can change it however you see fit. Uh, then there's other categories, economic, negative economic uh, impacts. Uh, then there's your infrastructure, water, sewer, storm water that you can do some things with. But each time we meet, I'll we'll bring some more ideas to you and those recommendations for those categories. Don't we have, uh, or, or, or maybe I should ask a question, uh, do we have uh, a prioritization of projects in that storm water? Um, they will still, I have that on my list as well, but <clears throat> the engineers were hopefully to be here tonight, but not quite finished doing yeah. Ranking them from one to forty, I believe is what they've got. Um, they will be here in November to present that to you. I will tell you this: I'm going to mark it off on the list. There was a deadline of October six to apply for some grants for stormwater, and being that we were almost at the very end of, or having good information on the study, we went ahead and applied for three and a half million dollars to do some large work. Large work meaning uh, opening up canals larger in some areas. And one of those canals would be what goes to Lucius Road. Uh, we feel like there needs to be an additional pipe that feeds out of Lucius Road into the swamp area um, to make that canal deeper and wider. Is that, isn't that where we, when you broke the dam, that thing drained in like two hours? Yeah, so that helped a lot. I mean, it, but it, it drained when we broke the beaver there. And it, but it also backs up. But it backs up. It backs up. So what, what, we're, what, we're gonna, what the plan is, if we get the money, this is 100% money, yeah. uh, if we get this crane, and we won't know until February. But it would open up that canal, which leads back to 301, and I have to resize pipe to 301. Uh, it's at 90 mm -hmm. foot. I don't remember the size. It was 300 it. feet, wasn't it, Bert, that they, that they had that had gone to two feet? Oh, you, you talking yes, sir. I don't know. Hampton Street. Hampton Street. Yeah, but this, this, would be before, this would be before we get to Hampton Street. And then this would come out right behind Davis Service Center. And then there's piping that goes from that canal. I think it's Earl Street where the state replaced that section that came in by the church. Is that Earl? <coughs> by the Pentecostal exactly. church. And to replace that larger pipe up to past um, Hayes' place. What is that? Home Industrial. Home Industrial. There's a small ditch there that we've got to open up and then replace the pipe under the railroad behind the city shop, which would drain a lot quicker for that area because that area flood, those houses flood all the time. Our shop floods. Uh, that's one section. Then there's another section that runs parallel to 301 from South 6th Avenue, which is behind Camp Davis, it's back to East Washington Street. Replace that trunk. Um, and then there was one more. I can't remember the third one. The one that feeds Harrison to Cleveland. It could be. Um, but I think that one in front of Hampton is the one that pulls in. But you know, they have, the engineers have come up with a plan on those three. We've submitted it as of October 6th, which was the deadline. Again, we don't know that we're going to get it. Uh, the estimation of $3.5 million. Again, if we got it, it's 100% more than we have no out of pocket or no match per se. Um, so that will be a plus. But um, they'll be here, the engineers will be here in November, and then we can kind of look at smaller projects that maybe we can do in house, um, or maybe we can contract out for that a smaller amount of money uh, to, to get some bank from our book there as well. But we'll know more at that November meeting. So, I guess to go back, American Rescue Plan money can 
fund some of these things in the storm room. But in this particular case, you know, we're looking at a three and a half million dollar grant that will be 100% money for it. Um, and then, like I said, you've got a handout of what is known as premium pay um, for employees that work. <clears throat> I have put in from March the 16th. How much money are you talking about? Somewhere around $200,000 mark. For how many employees? Uh, I've seen that breakdown. Yeah, 78, 12, 90, about 125 if you put the volunteer fire in there, part-time and full-time. Um, which, you know, that's what some of this money could be used for to tie people home. Um, but you can't call it bonuses. It's called premium pay. And, again, I set a date of March 16th, 2020. That's pretty much when the state shut down. I think that's when we shut our offices on uh, that Monday. And I've got it going through. Did they use pay? Pardon? Did they not use pay? No, no, everybody got paid. Everybody got paid. Basically, they got paid to go to work. No, we weren't. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. We, were, we, just, we just closed City Hall to the public. Take us on one of them more. Oh, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was. Yeah, everybody everybody was. We just closed facilities to the public at that time to try to figure out what we were supposed to do. Um, but I went from, from that day um, to June 30th of this year. Um, you, know, you can go as far as you want, I yeah. guess. But I thought June 30th was a, was a good time. And anybody that worked with the city and still in full with the city on this goes through would get X number of dollars. So we did that last year in the office. You know, so, I mean, obviously, we just, we we're right there. I mean, but th that was in your packet as well, to, not really to vote on tonight, to read over it, um, to talk more about it, and we're happy to talk to you about it. Uh, but I'd like for us to make a decision at our next meeting um, on that. Um, and then from Janet's standpoint, She's going to keep up with any money that's spent by them through the American Rescue Plan money. You'll have another printout each month showing this is what we got, this is what we spent. Um, and then if and ever we are audited by the feds, which making the assumption we will be sooner or later, you would have been. we've got our eyes dotted and our T's crossed and we sure don't want to say, so if we spent this money, they say, no, you can't do it. We won't got to pay it back. We, yeah. we don't want to do that. So that's in in your uh, packet as well. Downtown master plan. You talked about that again in that meeting. I think again that committee will meet uh, probably the first of November. Try to iron, iron out some more things there, and then I believe in November, as council, you can look at what's been decided from the committee standpoint and recommended, and then make some decisions on how you can do some things there. American Rescue Plan money can be used again for negative economic impacts. And, and downtown is a negative economic impact. How we want to use it is the way to figure it out and go from there. Um, the J.B. Martin project. And we've been talking about that now probably two years or more. Gotten behind due to COVID and then due to, due to some loopholes on um, they're trying to jump through with the state. Some folks are here tonight to talk about some of those things. However, uh, talking with the developer this week or last week, you know, they're looking to renovate that facility, which is the auditorium, but everything else, the old classrooms, into one bedroom apartments for seniors. What I call the white building on that property, there may be another name for it, that was built in the early 1900s. There is a second floor that they're trying to decide whether or not to develop into apartments. They're going to develop the first floor of that white building into apartments, but they don't want to have to put an elevator in to mess up their square footage. 
So they asked me if the city would be interested in going in partnership in developing the second floor, but it wouldn't cost the city any money. I said, okay, that explain to me how that's not going to cost us. So, is that kind of like $3.5 trillion that didn't cost yeah. any money? Yeah. So what they're suggesting is they don't want to develop the second floor if they can't rent it out. And without an, ele without an elevator, they can't rent it out to their clients, because they're seniors. However, they thought if they made, there's two classrooms, I've never been in the building, some of you may have, over the years and went to school there. Um, <clears throat> on the second floor, two classrooms and a bell tower. They want to leave the bell tower where it is, take the two classrooms, one on the left of the bell tower, one on the right of the bell tower, and make those apartments, one bedroom apartments, about 800 square feet. They in turn, if they do that, want the city to commit offering those apartments to first responders. They also want the city to decide what that rent will be. And whatever that rent will be, its property management will keep half of it each month. The city will get the other half. So I just threw out a number $300 a month What's our investment? We don't. No, we don't no. have any. But they're just asking us if we want to get half of it. But they just have to walk the stairs to go upstairs. They just have to walk the get up the stairs to go to. We have no financial investment. If it's not rented, they get nothing, we get nothing. Um, that's a good idea. It is. Now, my question to them was, all right, and I go back and I think about our first responders from the police department side. I probably got two or three that, that are single, that live in apartments today. That may be something they're interested in. Um, you know, I, there may be somebody that is married and don't have no children that may be interested. Um, so I said, you know, what if we run into the problem of not having anybody who's interested? One, can I open it up to other city staff? And they said, sure. <coughs> And if we wanted to open it up to teachers, we could. Um, and then it could be somebody with the fire, it could be somebody with EMS as well. But so this is like a one room efficiency. Yeah. yeah. And then probably is, when they get ready to show their, and I don't think they'll show that on their presentation, any bedroom sizes, but they're all going to be the same size bedrooms throughout the whole facility. Um, but it is. Well, there's no wall. It's just one room. I, I don't know that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know that. I'm assuming there are walls, but yeah. there will be a, a, a bathroom. The bathroom, yeah. you'll have. A wall. You probably won't have a washer dryer type deal. Right. Um, but I would think there would, you know, again, 750 square feet. That's, that's, that's pretty small. small. Yeah, that's not small at all. Yeah, it's good. They paid all the utilities, just as the other residents. They would pay their own utilities. If it's something you're interested in, I will let them know yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. And, uh, again, the, the first thing I it's too good to be true. If it's not rented, they can want to get money. Do you want something back in return? And they said no. But they don't want to just open it up. Open it up to any and everybody because then it takes what they like the idea of of a, of a police officer being yeah. on the side. I mean, all apartment complexes mm -hmm. do. And you know they've been vetted, so yeah. you know we're a source of a vetted uh, renter. And I, I, I see that side of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will, I will let them know that council is in there. I thought that building burned. It did. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't remember how much. Just the upstairs. Uh, it was on pretty a very smart part. Part. Front room down. Couple rooms downstairs. Couple rooms upstairs. Uh, One room in the Is that a motional thing? Or? No, no, no. Okay. Okay. That's just for once we get all the paperwork done between the two, we'll bring it back to council and, and see about that. Um, I think that's all I have at this time. Dr. Walker. Jeff, finance. In general fund, our total cash accounts and all the general funds is $2,505,000. Our total cash accounts and all the general 
our expenses, our revenues for 21 versus 20, there was $362,414 more in 20, but that was the timing of the local option money, delinquent taxes, court funds, permits, different areas of the money coming in. And the expenses, $71,483 more in 21 than in 2020. That's, you know, a lot of repairs, different things going up. And um, I did take out the purchase of the sanitation truck, came out of that, $258,021. And of course, Glenn talked to you about the American Rescue Plan. I showed you on the account that the account is set up. And it's on fund. And we've got water and sewer. Our total restricted and unrestricted accounts come to a million three hundred uh, three million eight hundred and ninety-five thousand one hundred and fifty-two dollars is for water and sewer. Our revenues, we brought in $25,590 more in 21 than in 20. Our expenses were $6,784 more in 21 than in 20. Our stormwater, our cash account, I'll tell you about that, is $253,570. Um, we put money into that to operate at this time until we get our money back from the FEMA mitigation, we'll get money back and we'll take that back out of there. What we did there, we were low on our stormwater because everything we've been doing in the stormwater study, which if you remember was 240,000 some odd dollars for the engineer did the studies. Once it's completed, you then get reimbursed from FEMA. And once we get that money, we'll put that back in to our account. Our, um, the difference was $97 more in 2020 than we did in 21. On that, on the revenues. And the expenditures were 52,000 more in 21. Um, Full time people. Yeah. yeah. And that, and we also have the uh, last payment is. Has that been made on the back no, of the truck this month? Be made this week. Yeah, 60, 60 some odd thousand dollars. Because that's due this month. That'll be done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we only have like 70,000 left on the on the mitigation to be completed on the other before we can we'll go ahead and start getting our money back on that. The golf course, we got $50,068 in the cash account. Uh, we brought in $7,528 more in 21 than we did in 20. Our expenses was $20,630 more in 2020 than in 21 due to pumps, our pumps and stuff that we had to purchase and replace. We just made one transfer in the last three months. Is that correct? 15000 That's on. Normally, we would be doing big yep. demand. Yes, you're, you're fine. That's now, awesome. we, now, we also got the county's portion earlier than we ever got. Right. They usually wait till about mid year or. So, is that already in that account? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the reason it's $50,000. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, our special revenue account, the 2% hospitality fund, we've got a million sixty three thousand five hundred seventy six dollars in that account. Our revenues were $17,065 more in 21 than in 20. And we still, we've got four payments left on the wellness center. Yeah, we, you know, that's, I mean, we might get another, the extra 80000 the way that looks, mm -hmm. you know. That's really good. So that's good. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Did we, before you go on, there was something that came to my mind and we just lost, lost it. You know, but it only gets worse. Yeah, I know it. But it's something I was going to follow up with. I'm going to maybe it'll pop back to me. Tell my patients, write it back. Yeah. Probably going to bring up something about Zach's business. Looking. No, I wasn't going to talk about Zach's business, but you see that they are working there. Um, 
I, I don't remember now if something I was going to follow up with. That's some exciting things to look at in the three buildings that we have. So, you know, I don't know whether they'll, you know, develop, but at least they, people are kicking tires. All right. Um, citizens report if anybody want to talk. You're a Dillon Historic uh, School Foundation. Yes, sir. I asked Ms. Mary Miller to come and kind of introduce what's going on. Spoonful of sugar helps the medicine. <laughs> Spoonful of sugar helps the medicine. <laughs> <laughs> That's her. Spoonful. Love it, Spoonful. I'm here just to give you a little history of what we come through Provide 
lessons and cooking schools and all that. It sounds wonderful for this community. And she also told me they were going to have electric cookouts for the cars and all that. But we appreciate the city council doing this for us. I want to also thank the, uh, the maintenance department for all they've done. The uh, police check on it. They do ride bys all the time. And we do have a broken in problem in the building, to be sure. But uh, y'all tried to get that land across the street from the school system. So we had first dibs on that, but at the time we didn't have any money, so we didn't get it. I think the city, I thought the city might be doing something with like that. No? Okay. It'd be a nice place to have a park. Right It'd be a nice real place. nice park, a yeah. walking park. And, uh, okay. and I also want to thank the trade enforcement who keeps us on our toes. I believe that's all I have. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to show you one of the architect's plans for the auditorium, and I can show you the gym also. Um, this is the site as you know it. Uh, the middle section is new. The, oh, excuse me. Alright. The auditorium in far left is 1936 structure. This is a 1936 gym. The white building in the back is actually 1896. That's an 1896 building. But this is a, the property as you know it. And <coughs> to show you first the existing, the existing um, facility that's the ground floor of the auditorium. Well, I was sitting there thinking about things and speaking to Jay David. I didn't realize it, but that auditorium built in 1936 was only 14 years old when I was in one of your mama's programs. That's how old I am. <laughs> I was about 14 years old and it looks old now. It's not been changed in 85 years. But when I was in high school there, I graduated in 64. This was one big room where Miss Rebecca Field Kinsley taught her piano lessons. And this was a room, I think Mary said that was a high school newspaper office. Yeah. And you can have a guidance office. Uh, no restroom facilities at all throughout the whole building, first and second floor. How these international stars like Risa Stevens, the Metropolitan Opera singer, and the Spanish dancers and the Russian dancers, where they went to a bathroom, we don't know. Because the only thing they plugged in, Miss Hensley didn't have a toilet, but they put this this uh, division inside this, which was a studio, the piano studio, which is one big room. <coughs> the but they plugged in one. Well, that's the only toilet on the whole in the whole facility. But you got a thousand fifty seats in the entire auditorium on the stage you have just as it was in 1936 you have the steps up there's one dressing room on this side there's one dressing room on that side that's the way it exists right now it hasn't changed in 85 years except for these temporary walls that were put in since i graduated okay this is the way it will look i'll tell you this mary and i talked about this four five years ago she challenged me to come up with a list of all the things we wanted to see done in the auditorium. I have a handwritten list of all the things we sent to the architect with James Maynard from uh, Red Clay Designs in Charlotte. He took everything that we asked for and he plugged it into his, into his architectural plan for the auditorium. What was Miss Hensley's studio has now become a woman's lounge. You have a lounge area here. You have this, the restroom area here. Uh, it's amazing that we have, where there were no toilets, we got lots of toilets. <laughs> we have say we got more toilets here, but this is not an auditorium, okay? On the other side, this is your entrance from Martin Luther King Boulevard, you've got the men's lounge, the men's restroom, and the manager's office. In the lobby, just as it was in 1936, we also have, I don't have the corner, but we also have access to an area here that Cadence has given us, the, has also given us, um, what's the word? <coughs> given us these rooms. They've given us these rooms. Yes. You got my umbrella. 
you have to see some So this one, which is in the new building, which replaced the one that burned in 81, I think. You're giving us this room, which will become a concession stand. We leave the, uh, the auditorium into the lobby. and go to the concession stand. We also have this space, like the foyer. We have this room for storage and this room for storage. On the stage, where there was once only a dressing room, you've now got a restroom on stage and the dressing room here. On the opposite side of the stage, you have a restroom and a dressing room. You'll also see these little steps. There's a metal staircase that will go up here, and a metal staircase that will go up here. The, the door that opens upstage is going to be expanded to a huge opening, so when we bring the productions in from outside, they can actually back up to the theater, to the auditorium, and unload from, from the stage productions. Got questions? Stop me. Talk to you Did I do something? was a big deal in Dillon. Uh, back, we 
original. Okay. Ground level, this was Mr. Epting's science class. We took chemistry, physics, geometry, his chemical storage room. And at the end of it, at the end of the gym, this side of the gym, you have the boys and the girls' dressing rooms. This was storage. Okay. With the renovation, these become apartments. And I can't read it very clearly. Uh, I can't read it at all. But you get an idea what the apartments will look like on the ground level of the gym facing Martin Luther King Boulevard. And I think they have, Mary, you'll have to correct me on this. Don't they have, do they have washers and dryers? I don't know. It looks like it does. Like <coughs> I don't have a paper copy. The auditory paper copy is on the door back there so you want to see them up close. But this will be on the ground level. You've got apartments on the ground level. These areas that were boys and girls restrooms, Tanya told us these would become beauty, beauty parlors and barber shops for restaurants, for residents, for residents and also for the community. Is that right? Now you want to see and show them what the other apartments may look like? Are you any questions? I need my water. I need my water instead of water down the floor. What? Yeah, I didn't want Any questions? Uh, the structure we know is going to start sometime this month or next month. Any idea the total cost of the project? Can't hear you. The total cost of the project. Has she told us what the total cost of the project is? I don't think so. They're doing all the time first. When all this is done, it's complete. My understanding is you foundation, historic foundation, will own the auditorium, correct? No, we get we the auditorium. You will lease it from them? Yes. They will own it. We we are going to lease it. They will maintain it. We take care of our car. Mm -hmm. They take care of the building. We take care of the what we're you know, just like any ordinary. You can be on charge with maintenance of the uh, auditorium. The maintenance, the maintenance of the auditorium. We are responsible for that. We're responsible for the bills. If something goes wrong with the windows or you know things like that, they all that. They all that. Yeah, we're their renters. So y'all come up and agree on the lease on that? We're doing that this week and next week. Short term, long term? We're going to do a long term lease to start with. It's reasonable lease. Thank y'all very much. I know it's been a long, a long haul. And it has been. We're just grateful to everybody. All right. Uh, old business uh, ordinance uh, number 21-14 annexation 1600 block of highway more, uh, 301 north uh, can i get a motion i want a motion second all those in favor mm -hmm. Aye. all right new business resolution number 18-21 resolution <coughs> opposing the south carolina department of transportation Preferred route of I 73 through Dillon County. Now, can you give me a little update on that? Well, well, I, I'm not sure this is the same resolution that council passed. Do you remember the year that we got this one from? 17? I think it was 2017. 2017. Um, and this would probably be the third or fourth resolution that we, we passed to be against I 73 route. From what I can remember, it was going across I-95 around mile marker 185. It, it was coming through around 181, but it was coming. But it had no exit ramp. No exit. No exit ramp. Oh, and and you, couldn't get, you couldn't get off the 
Mississippi three into Dillon County. No. And that was the reason that we well, and then the other reason would be you know there's discussions not only 34 widening uh, but also number nine widening from from Lowers to yeah. to Dillon yeah. um, and, and possibly into Marlboro County but you know, that, I think that's that's the focus that we should be on is number nine widening and yeah. not 73 coming through and not even having to wait to get off yeah. our own 73 in Dillon County. You know, I thought about that, and, and the upside of not, um, you know, it would it would it would make it difficult for people to bypass Bill and just go 9573 to the beach. Yeah. Flip side of that would be that would be good for our local option sales tax, but from an industrial development, that is awful. Mm -hmm. You know, not to have. Uh, and I-73-95. I've never heard of two interstates not crossing and not be able to access the other. Um, I, I think the reasoning behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I want to know I, that reasoning too. So if you're traveling 95, the only way you get off 73 would be to get off somewhere in Dillon, drive to Marion, because I know there's going to be a... Somewhere on 38. Was so you have to get off 95, yeah. right? go through to Marion, and catch 73 somewhere in Marion. Mm. Now that was the plan several years ago. I haven't seen anything again, you know. I'm not throwing I've never seen it in the cross. It's not about it. Yeah. 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 I said the three is not about building, yeah. it's about where it can be. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. we pay taxes to that career, so. so but you know, this anyway, this was that's what that ordinance is. Yeah, about. this is one that Councilman uh, Elder asked me about last month and we could pass a resolution. And not support I said. I make a motion. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, new business. ATAX uh, funds recommendation. The ATAX committee met a week or so ago. In your packet, you should have those recommendations along with what each nonprofit has asked for. What they requested. Uh, it was $92,000 requested, however, we only had $31,969.89, so you know, everybody's not going to get what they want. Um, this is for promote tourism in Dillon. Um, each one of these five we had given money to two prior years. Okay. Can I get a motion? I make a motion. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Uh, all right, planning and zoning appoint, uh, appointment. Uh, Tim, have you got somebody uh, to. Mr. Put Andrew. Andrew Hayes. Okay. Andrew Hayes. Vinny, you got that information? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, any discussion on that? Any, any, all right. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? All right, Councilman. Um, I just want to ask you, man, on, on the pump station on Hillside Drive. You know what? Time That's is. what I was going to bring up. Oh, yeah. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I had we had a pre-conference meeting today with the engineer and, and the uh, contractor. Um, we signed paperwork today for notice to proceed. Um, we were hoping that. We'd be sometime here in the next four to six weeks. But as the contractor said today, he can't get material and the very soon he to get material in mid January. So right now to start up would be as early as January 15th of 2022. Then they have 240 days to complete that project. Where's that one? That is our SRF loan. No, no, no. Where is the money? They don't they're paying to the finish, right? Yeah. No, well, they paid. They paid as they hit mild stone. Okay. Yeah. We haven't paid them up front. No, no, nothing's been paid. Yeah. And they won't, because SRF has to sign off on all payments because we get the money from SRF uh, as they draw that. SRF holds the money. That's correct. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, 
Benny just asked you a couple questions here. The status of Zaxby's, um, they have they given you kind of a report of what's how they looking and when they're going to open the doors? No, sir. I haven't got a report. I know they're in progress of um, uh, get their inspections done. I think Keith and um, Arthur went down there today uh, doing some inspections, but we don't have a deadline. I also see some um, changes over at Deerfield. Can you give us the status on that? Uh, I noticed some paint going on in the paint today. They're painting and it's cleaning up. We took out some vegetation, bushes around the building, some of that nature. It's cleaning up. That's good. I don't have anything else to talk about. Do they have a different date on the, those trees they have for about 84? No. What they're doing on that with the sea clones group, that's probably a year or so away. They will, streets that y'all gave me for them to look at in town, they will do that in November, and then they will they will decide what they're going to do, which ones they're going to pick. Um, but that will be still a year out before they do it. I don't think they've done anything on the ones that they did a year ago. I don't think they've started the paving on those yet that they do. Um, okay, can I get a motion to go into the executive session for legal and personal? Second. Thank you.